good morning students <coughs> so <coughs> we were discussing about module 2 sustainable development and environment we have discussed in this particular module about the role of climate change and its repercussions and then today we are going to study about the basics of carbon footprint and we'll also study in this particular module concept of carbon credit <coughs> so we begin concept of carbon footprint if you can see in the diagram the right hand side a footprint is there what are the things included in the footprint it's written waste then transport of the waste recycling okay then from the waste many useful things can be obtained just like fuel can be obtained derived from there which can be utilized for generation of electricity uh, from the recycled things many other new products can be obtained okay that generates uh, electricity which has been generated that can be used for uh, charging of rechargeable electric vehicles and also suppose organic products the decomposition of that from there we can obtain biodiesel biofuel which can be transmitted onto the fuel sections and after that what happens when uh, that fuel derived from the uh, waste products are again burnt utilized they will again be emitted into the atmosphere and then again the process whole process will continue so the concept of carbon footprint uh, refers to the total amount of greenhouse gases specifically carbon dioxide and other carbon compounds that are emitted directly or indirectly by an individual organization event or product throughout throughout its uh, life cycle okay so carbon footprint is basically all those direct methods indirect methods okay by which carbon dioxide is being generated and propagated into the atmosphere by an individual organization event circumstances everything so this measurement of carbon footprint is typically expressed in equivalent tons of carbon dioxide that is co2 emitted per year the concept of carbon footprint is crucial in the context of climate change mitigation as it helps individuals and organizations take responsibility for their environmental impact and work towards a more sustainable future time and again we have discussed that sustainable utilization of the resources are required for sustainable utilization of the resources we should know how to use the resources in optimum manner that they are there is provision for them to be utilized in future so the concept of carbon footprint is crucial in the context of climate change mitigation as it helps individuals and organizations take responsibility for their environmental impact and work towards a more sustainable future now understanding carbon footprint we will understand try and understand the car carbon footprint concept through a few further concepts that is the energy consumption transportation okay so what what that energy conservation or a big part of energy consumption says so fossil fuels burned for power and a heat mark a high level of carbon output emphasizing the urgency for cleaner energy you know students the fossil fuels which have been extracted from deep layers of earth 
the fossil fuels coal petroleum natural gas they have formed over thousands of years of dead and decaying of organic uh, materials dead bodies of animals plants human beings okay over prolonged years they have decomposed under intensive heat pressure chemical reactions and they have turned into the fossil fuels coal petroleum and natural gas so that is why they contain lots of carbon dioxide when they are burnt okay basically they contain carbon that is c they are burnt in air in presence of oxygen okay that is o2 and when c reacts with o2 consequently it produces co2 carbon dioxide so that is why in terms of energy consumption so fossil fuels burned for power uh, and a heat mark high carbon output so huge amount of carbon dioxide is generated high carbon content is released into the atmosphere and that is why cleaner fuels are required because when you add carbon dioxide into the atmosphere suppose a individual has added carbon dioxide into the atmosphere then 10 such individuals hundreds such individuals thousands millions trillions okay and you imagine how much amount of carbon dioxide in any way whether utilizing of natural resources renewable non renewable resources emissions okay huge huge amount of carbon dioxide is being generated it is being added into the atmosphere and consequently it is trapping lot and lot of heat from the sun which has to be taken care of on urgent basis because huge amount of carbon dioxide generated and released into the atmosphere will trap lot and lot of heat from the sun it is going to contribute to a great extent towards global warming and global warming is very very dangerous for existence of few or rather let me say for future existence of the entire ecosystem flora fauna everything then transportation choices in travel from cars to planes put a significant dent in carbon count with air travel notably impactful you know students there are families where suppose there are four individuals in the family they all the four individuals use their separate cars or suppose there are neighbors settled in an area who are going to the same destination same office same premise premises and yet they are using suppose there are hundreds of such individuals residing in a society in a near about vicinity and they are using their individual uh, vehicles cars and everything for reaching to the same destination so maybe same office same buildings from premises of working so all of them are traveling from car to plane to bikes and all and they are emitting a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere they are adding up to the con huge concentration of carbon dioxide that is why few governments especially if i remember the delhi government they try and implement the odd and even rules so that odd number of vehicles or even number of vehicles can be restricted in a day that is also not very helpful but still a little bit of effort towards curbing of that carbon dioxide generation you know everyone should think about it and the authorities should also think of ways of restricting the addition of carbon dioxide content into the atmosphere is very very essential now additional carbon contributors further carbon content is added into the atmosphere from what sources that we are going to study so production impacts the creation of goods demands energy often sourced from carbon heavy processes you know to manufacture anything okay from food to any kind of production that requires energy okay you need temperature you need heat you need energy that heat that temperature that energy is obtained from the fuels in whatever form 
solid liquid gases whatever form okay and those fuels when utilized for generation of or generating energy they are going to definitely naturally consequently release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so in this way the production impacts to great extent in the contribution of carbon dioxide into the ambient atmosphere and over over a number of months years they go on adding and adding and the level goes on increasing and further increasing and which is very worrying situation then waste challenges basically decomposing landfill wastes liberates methane which significantly worsening or worsens the greenhouse effect you know students in the landfill sites yeah, there are you will see mountains of landfill sites all the solid waste from procured from the various municipal areas uh, which are termed as municipal solid wastes so they are basically dumped in a landfill site in a dumping ground they are dumped the mountains of landfill okay one above another and above that one more layer so a whole mountain of that landfill site and from time to time through uh, ex excavators and through suppose uh, other such drag lines and all they are basically compacted and more layer of landfills are created now you imagine pressi under the heat from the sun and the precipitation in the open sky only they are being dumped scorching heat from the sun then precipitation dews in the night and also due to some infiltration of water from some sources they basically decompose okay and when they decompose they form a very harmful chemical in the liquid form which is known as leachate and also in the process of decomposing because they contain organic inorganic both materials so somehow carbon dioxide methane everything is produced and you know methane is very very efficient in trapping heat from the sun maybe maybe i can take the freedom to call uh, methane more dangerous than carbon dioxide in these terms because they have much more affinity towards trapping the heat from the sun so more and more methane is being produced the same methane if it can be trapped somehow and actually there are processes by which it is trapped also that can be used as a fuel you okay that can be very very useful as a fuel but that methane if remains untrapped if remains unchecked then it is going to contribute towards the pollution of the atmosphere by increasing the temperature of earth by trapping lot of heat from the sun deforestation you know students the trees are being chopped down they are being uh, defore deforestation is practiced on a large scale forests are cleared all the natural jungles forests are being cleared and concrete jungle is being infiltrated upon in concrete what happens cement is there cement production you know 1 kg of cement production almost releases an equal 1 kg of or 900 g of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere then you know students uh, from the childhood onwards you have you must have known that the vegetation the plants the trees they inhale carbon dioxide and they release oxygen okay yes there are uh, uh, in the night time the process reverses but still still huge amount of carbon dioxide is purified by deforestation they act as lungs for the atmosphere and when we chop down the trees but we cut down the forest we clear the jungles and we make concrete jungles so we are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere by tons and tons and tons and thousands of tons more of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are being added into the atmosphere over to long time okay and that is very very dangerous for the existence the very existence of mankind the entire flora fauna of the ecosystem now how can the carbon footprint be reduced i think by this time you must have understood the concept of 
carbon footprint okay and how it is generated how carbon content is added up by individuals by societies okay by transportation by burning of fossil fuels and all now what are the methods processes systems adopted for reduction of curtailment of carbon footprint so there are several methods few we will discuss one such method is energy efficiency if you can use alternative fuels instead of fossil fuels instead of burning coal petroleum and natural gases if you can find out alternative fuels biodiesel okay and other such fuels which will not further add up to the greenhouse gases so they are going to be very very helpful advances in technology enhance energy savings cutting back on unnecessary carbon costs so for that advancement of technology is required more and more research has to be done on alternative fuels which do not add up to carbon dioxide and then only we can reduce the carbon footprint which exists right now then renewable shift solar and wind energy represent clean alternatives to traditional carbon intensive sources so renewable resources are you know students which can be renewed which is replenished naturally by nature just like heat from the sun tidal energy from the tides of oceans and seas wind from the wind mills okay wind which is component of atmosphere then geothermal energy all these are basically natural resources which can be utilized and which will never be exhausted which can get replenished by mother nature okay so our focus has to be there to shift towards that side so that our dependence on non renewable fossil fuels can be curtailed can be diminished so that further addition of carbon dioxide and other such associated greenhouse gases into the atmosphere is reduced and for that participation and awareness is very much essential it's quite quite essential uh, for individuals okay to be encouraged and to be basically educated towards using renewable resources over non renewable resources the solar energy the wind energy the tidal energy the geothermal energy and all are examples of uh, such renewable replenishable uh, resources which won't contribute any kind of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere which will help in sustainable use and preservation of uh, non renewable fuels and energy for futuristic use so in the renewable shift solar and wind energy represent clean alternatives to traditional carbon intensive sources then the transportation so embracement of sustainable travel via public transport and more efficient vehicles for a greener commute so you know students if same family members or if same individuals of the society are going to a particular destination can't they uh, do a car pooling and go can't they use public transportations available if possible to whatever extent possible then can't we their transportations from uh, suppose biodiesel ethanol and all okay research is been going on and few cities have uh, adopted but on a large scale the adoption has to be made then only our dependency on carbon related uh, resources can be reduced and it will be very useful for our earth and environment now further actions for carbon reduction in the diagram you can see people are cycling so these are all alternative things it will keep you healthy also and it will also uh, prevent formation of carbon dioxide okay then utilization of the waste is reduction of the landfill sites okay prevention of landfills instead of engagement of all the uh, materials 
okay on day to day basis will be very very helpful so waste wisdom has to be there knowledge about the waste how it is generated how it can be reduced how it can be curtailed how it can be alternative things can be utilized that wisdom has to be there that education needs to be there so consistent recycling and waste minimi minimization can ease the emission load from waste processes then carbon offsetting it's very important concept carbon offsetting is also very important engagement in carbon offset programs offer balance by neutralizing emissions through positive actions so offset is what offset is basically suppose anything that we use as a reference point okay so carbon offsetting is engagement in carbon offset programs which offers balance by neutralizing emissions through positive action so basically offsetting here refers to offsetting to things okay which will prevent in generation of further increase of carbon in carbon contents into the atmosphere okay now another concept carbon credit you must have heard the term debit and credit in banking system okay credit means something which is added into your account debit is something which has been taken away or removed from your earnings from your account now what is this carbon credit so market mechanism carbon credit create economic motivations for maintaining lower emissions aligning economy with ecology so you know students <coughs> there is one more concept called carbon budgeting carbon budgeting means every country is allowed to produce a, or generate or emit <coughs> a particular quantity of carbon dioxide annually if that country emits more than that so that country has to be uh, that has to be informed that has to be taken care of okay in whatever friendly way to curtail the production of carbon dioxide carbon budgeting is there and the developing countries they basically produce more carbon dioxide because the developed countries have already exploited resources and they have become rich but the underdeveloped countries they basically generate lot of carbon dioxide okay so carbon budgeting is important in the in that context so carbon credits create economic motivation for maintaining lower emissions aligning economy with ecology so they are part of a broader concept known as emission trading which aims to insensitize the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by uh, providing economic incentive incentive for entities to limit their carbon footprint so basically carbon credits are part of broader concept known as emission trading uh, which aims to insensitize the reduction of carbon dioxide producing or other greenhouse producing gases and that is done by providing economic incentives to entities to limit their carbon footprint if developing nations are help economically okay if they are given incentives to reverts to use alternatives to fossil fuels and if they can be assisted by developed nations then definitely that will be termed as carbon credit means something which has been credited in their economy due to lesser use of carbon generating things okay that is basically re referred to as carbon credits so from the discussion so far we have understood very clearly that carbon dioxide production has to be regulated diminished curtailed to whatever extent possible there is a havoc amount of carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere on a day to day basis and that is very very dangerous for the existence of mankind and that is why it has to be 
diminished it has to be reduced and for that concerted efforts from every individual from housing societies from authorities from regions states and various countries and that is the global effort by which global warming and climate change can be taken care of so in the next class we will go some somewhere into details of more inside the concept of carbon credits so that's all for today student uh, we'll meet in the next class till then take very ca good care of yourselves and study properly thank you